What's up with it, y'all? It's EJO E Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. So, what we are getting into right now the real South Africa. It's from the couple from the real South Africa. I'm happy I was introduced to them. You know, um, I'm really happy I was introduced to them. You know, they're just showing like a different uh, walk of life. Like, you know, just like letting people know in the United States how South Africa is. You know, I think this is real cool how um, they have this, you know, and I really like their channel for this. So here's a video I want to do. This one is South Africa. Um, the title of it is South Africa, the myth about who lives here in South Africa more than the Zulus and Cape Town. Let's see what it is right here, y'all. All right. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Real South Africa. Um, we got a special guest today who is going to assist us in telling us all about the geography of South Africa. Now, I could have actually done it myself, but I felt that they did a great job, and I wanted to bring it to you as well. And again, this is an opportunity for you guys to learn, but at the same time, go ahead and book a trip with us. Go ahead and come to South Africa so we can physically show you what's really going on here in the country. And for those South Africans that are actually watching this and listening to this, hey, leave your comments. Let everybody know you're here. Um, tell them about your, your, your locations, where province you come from. Let's do all of that. Let's start the conversation and let's start it now. Okay. Pause that. Let me know too, you guys. Go ahead and um, you know, leave a comment. Let me know um where at in South Africa you guys are from and let me know how you guys feel about this. You know, all right, so let's check this out. Hear from you soon. Provinces of South Africa. A few side notes before we start. South Africa has three capitals. They have 11 official languages and three general categorized people groups. The whites, the blacks, and the coloreds. The coloreds are basically anybody who's either mixed or just not white or black. It's kind of funny because many celebrities that we usually associate as icons for the black community like Beyonce or Will Smith, they wouldn't even be considered black in South Africa. Trevor Noah even joked about this once. Also, many people groups in South Africa have kings. They hold very important roles of influence for their communities, but on a legislative level they don't really have government power and finally pretty much everybody speaks English or Afrikaans to some degree maybe a little less in the rural areas but yeah in order to intercommunicate English is usually the first language choice all right and with those notes in check let's begin first one Eastern Cape birthplace of Nelson Mandela the capital is Bisho but the largest cities are Port Elizabeth and East London the largest people group being the Kosa people pause up this is about to be cool I have a feeling right here this is about to be dope because I, this is about to be cool because I can see how I'm about to um, be learning a lot of things right here. I will tell you some with um, South Africa. I didn't know that there were states. You know, I didn't know. I thought it was just a country. I know, very ignorant, you know, but um, I didn't know that there were states. It's pretty embarrassing to say that, you know, but I'm admitting it, you know, so Anyways, let's get back to this, all right? Let me know how you guys feel about this, too, and, you know, let me know where you guys are from, and, yeah, all right? So, here we go. That's right. Get it right. Osa. Also known as the language of Wakanda. Yeah, that's the language they're speaking in Black Panther. <laughs> well, keep in mind the click language is actually kind of originated from the Khoisan people group, but you know, you're not even listening. Moving on. Right now, this guy, Zuelonke Sikau, he holds the title of the current king of the Khoisan people. They also have a lot of chiefs and like minor kings, I was told. One of them got arrested. It's complicated. In events, you might see people wearing traditional clothing and articles like the Inkrepeta and Ikrea and the Ukkakata worn by women. Whereas for men, you might see the Inkawa, Isidanga, and Umka head beads. Whew! There are tons of beautiful sights like the Hole in the Wall, the Valley of Desolation, the Tsitsikama Forest, and they have one of the only few ski resorts in Sub-Saharan Africa. Yes, on rare occasions, it actually does sometimes kind of snow here, especially in the winter months of like July, August. Keep in mind, we're in the Southern Hemisphere. Free State! Really? The Golden Gateway to the Heart of Africa. Capital is Bloemfontein, also known as the Fountain of Flowers. It's also the judicial capital of South Africa. This was basically the old 
Old Boer Orange Free State was established by white Dutch colonizers that were kind of running from the British. So yeah, quite a few white Afrikaans people here. Now the largest group that lives here are the Sutu people and just like we talked about in the Lesotho episode, they are basically the brothers of Lesotho. They have the same customs, traditions, language, and history. They wear the Basutu blankets and they ride horses, stuff like that. Many South Africans don't even really see Lesotho as like a separate country, but just kind of like uh, diplomatically on paper, they kind of have to. Here you can see the Maloti Mountains, they're beautiful. They're also known for having Fredford Dome, the largest verified impact crater on Earth. Granted, this is also kind of like the site of controversy with that whole government land plot redistribution policy that they just started, where they're kind of like either buying farm plots from white African owners, like either for super cheap or they're just kind of taking it. It's a messy topic and I'm not one to speak authoritatively on it, so yeah. Gauteng! That's right, Gauteng, not Gauteng! It means the place of gold because it's kind of like the site where they had that huge gold rush back in the 1800s. It's the smallest province in size, but the largest in population. It's kind of like what Sao Paulo is to Brazil. They have the largest city, Johannesburg, aka Josie, Joni, Joburg. They also have Pretoria, which is the executive capital of the country. So yeah, this place is kind of like a big deal for South Africa. The place is super diverse. There's all different types of African groups that live here, but the largest would probably be the Swana and the North. Here we go, I'm about to tell you something um, right here. I thought Joburg was in the middle of South Africa. I didn't know it was, I didn't know it was where it was. And I didn't know like, I guess like the state it's in or what he was showing. I didn't know it was like so little. You guys just do not know how much a lot of people, how much we do not know about um, Africa period, but South Africa. And I think this is cool how the people that came out with this channel, the real South Africa, that's one thing I do like about it, you know, because it does give people uh, inside of um, what South Africa is like. And it's something that a lot of people should know about. And I really like this, how I'm learning with um, different things like this. All right. All right, let's go back. North Sutu people. There's also lots of immigrants that come here from all over the world. You got a lot of Indians, a lot of Chinese, a lot of Europeans. They have the only street in the world that is home to two Nobel Peace Prize winners. They have the tallest building in all of Africa. Of course, you already know, this was the place where the World Cup was hosted. They have the largest urban forest on earth. They have that really cool Gold Reef City amusement park, a Chinese temple for some reason. One of the most notable spots, Freedom Park. It's beautiful, lots of monuments there. But overall, yeah, it's kind of like the big shot province that keeps the whole country fun. KwaZulu Natal, the Zulu Kingdom, home of the Zulus. Capital Peter Martyrburg, however, the largest city is Durban. As the name implies, it is the place of Zulus. Natal is derived from Portuguese for Christmas because Vasco da Gama kind of discovered the place on Christmas Day. Obviously, once again, this is the epicenter of everything Zulu. You've probably heard of them. Shaka Zulu, the military leader, Zulu clothing, Zulu tradition, Zulu music, everything. They are essentially the cousins of the Swazi people that we talked about in the Eswatini episode. They even have the same reed dance festival. Even many of the white people that live here, they speak Zulu as a second language. They have a king, this guy. He actually had to take refuge on St. Helena Island to kind of avoid being possibly assassinated by his uncle, so I've been told. Gandhi used to live here and now tons of Indians have moved in. And it's really interesting because this is the only province in which Indians kind of surpass the whites in owning all the big businesses. They are known for also kind of being like the best water activity province. You can do pretty much everything, surfing, diving, kite surfing, it's all here off the coast. Durban is a really cool city. The Drakensberg Mountains are right there and you can find the highest peak, Mafadi, that they share with Lesotho. Oh, and if you come here, try some bunny chow. It's like a really popular fattening dish. Limpopo, the first kingdom of Africa, so it's called. This is the northernmost province and it's named after the Limpopo River that they use as a border for Botswana and Zimbabwe. Capital being Polokwane. Now this province is kind of home to like three distinct people groups. Northern Sotho people are famous for having a rain queen. Supposedly she can make it rain. So many pop culture references I could throw in there, but I won't. They have a lot of cool metal art and they like to play music on this thing called the Dipella. It's like a thumb piano. Now the Tsonga inhabit areas that are both in South Africa and Mozambique. They technically kind of don't have a king, but many people that are descendants of this guy, they claim that they can be king because he was kind of like a big shot for their tribe. Now the Venda are like one of the least westernized influenced groups in all of South Africa. They do have a king and many chiefs and also there's like a subgroup called the Lemba. I think we kind of talked about this in the Ethiopia episode. They're kind of seen as like one of the lost tribes of Israel. Africa. 
African Jews. But yeah, that's a whole other different story. Oh, plus their women are famous for the snake dance. A famous dish over here would be Mopani worms. You can eat them cooked or fried or dried. They also have part of the famous Kruger National Park in their province. And this is also kind of the province that deals with that controversial illegal immigrant slash refugees from Zimbabwe thing going on. Mpumalanga, the place where the sun rises. Capital Nilspruit, don't know if I pronounced that right, or Mbombela. Again, just like we discussed in the Eswatini episode, this is the province that has Swazi people. They are basically the exact same people as the ones in Eswatini. They honor the Swazi king and many of their chiefs just live in South Africa. Just like Lesotho, many South Africans don't even really see Eswatini as a separate country, but it's kind of more like a parent's house with a fence over it. Otherwise, there's the Ndebele people. They also have their own king. And they're also famous for having those women that have like really big beaded necklaces and those brass bands all over their necks. Sometimes it elongates their necks, very similar to the Karen tribe in Southeast Asia. They also have those really cool geometrically painted houses. However, those patterns were actually kind of like a little bit of a secret code that they used to kind of hide from their enemies and the boars. Otherwise, they're very famous for the Blyde River Canyon, the third deepest canyon in the world, and also possibly the greenest. Lots of amazing hiking spots, one of the oldest caves in the world. Northern Cape, the largest province, yet the least populated. Capital is Kimberley, aka the city that started the whole mining industry. Also home to the Sun, the most ancient people in the world. Now, this is an interesting one. For one, it has the highest white population ratio out of all the provinces in South Africa at over 40%, mostly Afrikaners of Dutch descent. Here you can find the Khoi and San Bushmen. Now, these are the original people that speak the click languages. They aren't even related to the majority Bantu peoples that migrated from West Africa thousands of years ago. There aren't too many of them, but they're kind of like the originals of South Africa. Otherwise, much of the province is arid or dry or desert. It's kind of like where the Kalahari Desert starts and then just kind of meanders into Namibia. Lots of cool sites though, for example, the Orange River, the longest river in South Africa, the Kimberley Big Hole and Mine Museum can be found here. There's the Wonderwork Caves where you can find ancient sun rock paintings, big vast open domain with ancient mystery and natural treasure. The Northwest Province, yeah, I know what you're thinking, known as the <laughs> Cradle of Humankind. <laughs> Capital, Mahikeng, it used to be called Mafikeng. The largest people group here are the Tswana. They are literally siblings of the exact same Tswana people that we talked about in the Botswana episode. I love how we can just give you guys shortcuts by referencing videos that we already made. It's funny though, because South Africa actually has more Tswana people than all of Botswana. Now they don't have a king, but they have many chiefs, actually richer than many of the kings in South Africa. And it all had to do with platinum mining. That's right, this province is the largest platinum producer in the world. It's also famous for kind of being like the Las Vegas of South Africa. It has that Sun City place, which is like a casino resort on a dormant volcano. But yeah, otherwise uh, very similar to the Botswanans, uh, lots of mining, and these people kind of know how to handle money very well. And finally, Western Cape, the wine country. The capital is Cape Town, which is also the legislative capital of South Africa. And it's also nicknamed the Mother City. Now, you know, technically this place could have also been called the Southern Cape because it is geographically the southernmost point of Africa. It's so south, you can literally see penguins on the beach sometimes. It's where the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean meet. It's the first place where the Europeans arrived in South Africa. Now this one's interesting too, because it's the only province in South Africa where the colored people make up the majority mostly mixed between white and black. Afrikaans is the most commonly spoken language, however, English is used a lot in Cape Town. So many iconic places to visit, like Table Mountain, Robben Island Prison and Museum, colorful houses of Bokap, Cape of Good Hope, Cape Point, these cool mountains. But yeah, beautiful place, interesting backstory, and wine, wine country. They love, they love wine here. And that is it, the provinces of South Africa. That was good. I learned a lot right there. Like, I learned a lot right there. I just learned about a lot of stuff that I didn't even, wow. Wow. That was good right there, man. Let me know how you guys feel about that, man. Let me know where in South Africa you guys live and which Providence, um, you know, which area. Just like I was saying, you guys, like, I, I didn't know a lot. I thought, I didn't, I did not know how far away Joburg was from Cape Town. I did not know that. Um, let me know how you guys feel about that. You know, just let me know everything. All right. Thank you for coming. Y'all go ahead and like this channel. Subscribe. We up out of here.